don't be afraid to be alone. Being by yourself is far superior to being with bad company. Each person, object or situation in our lives carries with it a certain energy, and not all of this energy serves us positively. Learning to detach is to understand that holding on to the old prevents the arrival of the new. Imagine making space in your life, like cleaning a house full of old objects, allowing light and fresh air to enter. This video is an invitation to explore the art of detachment, a transformative process that goes beyond mere loss, guiding you towards a path of freedom and self-discovery for detaching is not just about letting go of what no longer serves, but rather it is an act of profound renewal. Here, we will explore effective and intelligent ways to release what no longer serves us, creating space for new experiences, relationships, and opportunities. This video is for those who feel the weight of emotional excess, for those who long for clarity, peace, and a renewed sense of purpose. Let's discover how to cut the ties that bind us to the past and embrace the freedom that comes with detachment. Be strong and watch until the end, as all items are important. Before we start, please remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. It helps us a lot and costs nothing to you. Let's go. Number one, take time apart. Taking time apart can be an effective strategy to detach from people, situations, or things that no longer contribute to your well-being. This period of distancing allows you to gain perspective, reassess your emotions and thoughts, and better understand the impact of this connection on your life. During this time, it is essential to engage in activities that promote self-exploration and personal growth. This can include spending time with other people who have a positive influence on your life, engaging in hobbies or interests you may have neglected, or even exploring new experiences that expand your worldview. This distancing doesn't necessarily mean cutting all ties forever. Instead, it's about giving yourself necessary space to breathe, reflect, and heal. Over time, you may find that your perspective on the person or situation has changed, allowing you to make healthier and more grounded decisions about how to proceed in the future. Remember, the process of detachment does not happen overnight and requires patience and self-understanding. Allow yourself to feel what you need to during this time but also commit to moving forward, prioritizing your peace and happiness above all. Number two, differentiating between need and want. Understanding the difference between what is essential for your life and well-being and what is merely desired can provide a new perspective and help ease the emotional load of unhealthy attachments. Needs are fundamental aspects of your survival and mental health such as food, shelter, love, and security. Desires, on the other hand, are things you may want, but are not crucial for your existence or long-term happiness. They are often influenced by emotions, social pressures, or habits. To start differentiating between needs and wants, conduct an honest analysis of your life. Ask yourself, do I really need this to live or be happy or is it something I just want for convenience or momentary pleasure? By answering these questions, you can begin to identify areas of your life where desires may be masquerading as needs, creating unnecessary attachments. Furthermore, by understanding your true needs, you can start to appreciate what you already have, rather than constantly seeking something more or better. This doesn't mean you should deny all your desires, but rather recognize and accept that they are not essential for your fulfillment. Practicing gratitude can also help in differentiating between need and want. By focusing on what you have and the things that are truly important, you can find satisfaction in the simple joys of life, reducing the urge to always seek more. 
Number three, be strictly rational. This involves separating your emotions from the situation and assessing it from a purely logical and fact-based perspective. First, conduct an objective analysis of the pros and cons of the relationship or situation. List the tangible benefits and possible drawbacks. Ask yourself, is this relationship aiding my growth? Is it aligned with my values and life goals? What are the actual consequences of maintaining this connection? Being strictly rational also means recognizing and challenging your own justifications and rationalizations. Often, we keep certain people or things in our lives based on habits, fear of loneliness, or insecurity. By challenging these reasons with clear logic, you can start to view the situation in a new light. Furthermore, consider the alternatives and possible solutions for the current situation. This could involve setting new goals, seeking different forms of satisfaction and happiness, or simply accepting that some things are beyond your control and that it's time to move on. Adopting a rational approach doesn't mean you should suppress or ignore your emotions. Instead, it involves balancing your emotional reactions with a careful and thoughtful assessment of the facts. By doing so, you can make more informed and healthy decisions about how and when to detach. Number four, acceptance of change. Adopting a stance of acceptance towards change is essential for the process of detachment. Change, whether desired or not, is a constant in life, bringing with it new opportunities, challenges, and perspectives. Understanding that change is inherent to the human experience helps to lessen resistance and attachment to specific people, objects, or situations. When we accept that everything around us is in constant flux, we start to value the present more, learning to appreciate people and experiences while they are available. This understanding not only eases the pain of detachment, but also prepares us to embrace new chapters of life with openness and curiosity. Accepting change involves recognizing that our lives are composed of a series of phases, and each phase has its own value and lessons to offer. This allows us to release what no longer serves our growth, making room for new, enriching experiences. By embracing change as an essential part of life, we cultivate flexibility, resilience, and an inner peace that sustains us through life's transitions. This is a crucial step in detaching with grace and confidence, allowing us to flow with life rather than against it. Number five, focus on your essential needs. This is an effective tactic for detaching from people, objects, or situations that don't add significant value to your life. By reassessing what is truly important, you gain a clearer perspective on your priorities and what deserves your energy and attention. Identify your basic needs, such as health, safety, love, and self-esteem, and compare them with the desires that have been the source of your attachment. Often, upon this analysis, we find that much of our time and energy is being consumed by things that do not contribute to our fundamental well-being. By focusing on the essentials, you free up mental and emotional space, allowing new experiences and more meaningful relationships to enter your life. Concentrate on meeting these fundamental needs, and you will find that detachment from less crucial elements naturally follows this reorientation. Number six. Recognition of impermanence. Understanding that everything in life, including people, is temporary can help alleviate the emotional and mental grip we have on them. This realization stems from the idea that the nature of existence is to flow and change. By internalizing that no situation or relationship is fixed and that everything is in constant transformation, you begin to accept changes as a natural part of life rather than resisting them. This helps reduce fear, anxiety, and sadness, often associated with losses or changes, as you come to understand that loss is an inevitable part of the human experience. 
Moreover, this understanding can lead to a greater appreciation of the present, encouraging you to value people, moments, and things while they are present in your life, without overly attaching to them. The practice of detachment does not mean you should become indifferent or distant, but rather that you should cultivate love free of possessiveness, a conscious engagement without rigid expectations. Reflecting on impermanence can also encourage a sense of gratitude and acceptance as you begin to accept life and its experiences as they are, not as you wish they were. By acknowledging that everything is transient, you learn to gradually let go of excessive attachment and embrace the flow of life with more peace and openness. Number 7. Seeking New Experiences Familiarity can be comfortable, but it can also keep you stuck in behavior patterns and relationships that no longer contribute to your personal growth. By seeking new interests, activities, and social interactions, you introduce diversity and freshness into your life, which can lessen the significance of what was previously familiar and reduce attachment. This search can take many forms, from learning a new skill, traveling to unknown places, to getting involved in different types of communities or social groups. Each new experience is an opportunity to discover unknown parts of yourself and to better understand what truly brings meaning and satisfaction to your life. Furthermore, by exposing yourself to new environments and people, you gain new perspectives and ideas that can help reevaluate and change your view on previous situations and relationships. This not only facilitates the process of detachment, but also enriches your life experience, making you more resilient and adaptable to future changes. Number 8. Exercise of Daily Reflection By taking time to consciously think about your priorities, you can identify what is truly important to you and what merely occupies mental and emotional space without offering real value. Start by setting aside a quiet moment of the day to sit and reflect. It could be in the morning to set intentions for the day or at night to ponder on the experiences and learning. During this time, ask yourself questions like, what do I value in my life? Which goals am I pursuing? Is there something or someone I am holding on to that does not contribute to my well-being or personal growth? Use a journal to record your thoughts and feelings. Writing can help clarify your ideas and detect patterns in your behaviors and attitudes. By reviewing your notes regularly, you will be able to track your progress and make adjustments as needed. Reflecting on your daily experiences and choices also helps promote self-understanding and self-acceptance. Over time, you will begin to notice which aspects of your life need change and can make decisions more aligned with your true values and goals. Moreover, daily reflection encourages gratitude. By focusing on what you have and what you have achieved, rather than on what is missing or what has been lost, you cultivate an attitude of satisfaction and contentment, which naturally leads to less attachment to external people, things, or situations. Number 9. Identification of Unhealthy Attachments To detach from people, it's crucial to identify the attachments that are harmful to your well-being. This identification requires attentive and honest observation of your daily interactions, feelings, and reactions to different aspects of your life. Ask yourself, what or who is consuming your energy negatively? Are there situations or objects that provoke feelings of discomfort, sadness, or anxiety for no apparent reason? Once these unhealthy attachments are identified, analyze the impact they have on your life. Consider how your quality of life could improve if you reduced or eliminated these influences. This process may involve reflecting on old beliefs, behavior patterns, and expectations that may no longer be relevant or beneficial. The next step is to create an action plan. This could include setting healthy boundaries, communicating your needs clearly, or even cutting ties if necessary. It could also mean changing your environment, 
getting rid of material items that bring back negative memories, or committing to new hobbies and activities that better align with your current values and goals. Number 10. Set limits on your desires. This approach helps to recognize and accept that not everything we want or wish to possess is within our reach. This is a reality common to everyone, but it becomes problematic when we become hostages to our desires. Focusing solely on what we cannot have, which can lead to feelings of frustration, dissatisfaction, and worthlessness. First, reflect on the difference between wanting and needing. Question whether what you desire is truly essential for your happiness and well-being, or if it is merely a fleeting whim. By making this distinction, you may realize that many of your desires are not as important as they seemed. Next, practice gratitude for what you already have, focusing on the good things in your life, even if they are small or seemingly insignificant, can help to diminish the importance of unmet desires. This not only improves your mood and overall satisfaction, but also redirects your attention to the positive, decreasing the focus on what is lacking. Another effective strategy is setting realistic and achievable goals. Instead of aspiring for something out of your reach, focus on goals that you can achieve with the resources you already have. This helps create a sense of accomplishment and progress, reducing the feeling of lack and boosting self-esteem. Finally, learn to say no to yourself. Establishing personal limits is crucial for managing your desires and maintaining a healthy balance. Remember that saying no to a momentary desire can mean saying yes to more lasting peace of mind and a sense of true freedom. By setting limits on your desires, you gain greater control over your emotional and material life, allowing you to detach more effectively and promote deeper well-being. Number 11. Exploration of Creativity Engaging in creative activities is a powerful way to detach from people, things, or situations that no longer serve your well-being. Creativity allows you to explore new ways of expression and discover unique aspects of your own individuality. By focusing on creating something, you distance yourself from daily concerns and attachments, redirecting your energy towards something constructive and personally meaningful. Start by identifying activities that spark your passion and creativity. Whether it's painting, writing, music, dance, photography, or any other form of artistic expression, don't worry about the end result or external judgments. The goal is to engage in the creative process and allow your expression to flow naturally. Creative exploration can serve as a therapeutic tool, helping you to process emotions, experiences, and thoughts in a way that words often cannot express. By dedicating time to creative activities, you gain an outlet for suppressed emotions, relieve stress, and strengthen the connection with yourself. Moreover, by focusing on creative projects, you develop a sense of accomplishment and self-confidence. This can be incredibly liberating, especially if you're struggling to detach from relationships or situations that undermine your self-esteem. Creativity encourages experimentation and failure, teaching that mistakes and detours are natural parts of growth and learning. Encourage yourself to try different forms of art and creative activities, even those outside your comfort zone. This not only expands your creative repertoire, but can also uncover new interests and passions, contributing even further to your detachment process. Number 12. Love and accept the facts. This can be one of the most challenging yet liberating steps in the detachment process. It involves recognizing and accepting reality without trying to change it. Resist it or wish it were different. Instead of fighting against what is, learn to flow with the events and circumstances of life. This acceptance does not mean passivity or resignation, but rather a deep understanding that some things are beyond our control. When we accept the facts as they are, we release the energy that was spent on resistance and denial. This allows us to focus on what we can change, 
our reactions and attitudes towards situations. Loving the facts, as they are, also includes developing compassion for yourself and others. Realize that everyone is doing the best they can with what they have at the moment. By accepting people and situations without judgment, you promote an inner peace that is indispensable for detachment. Number 13. Focus on internal control. Detachment often begins by recognizing that we can control our own actions and reactions, but not those of others or external circumstances. This understanding leads to serenity and clarity as it allows you to focus on changing what is within your reach while accepting what is beyond it. By focusing on your internal control, you can work on your self-esteem, set personal goals, and adopt a more positive attitude toward life. This does not mean becoming passive in the face of challenges, but rather choosing a balanced and constructive response, maintaining inner peace and emotional equilibrium, even in times of uncertainty or when faced with challenging situations. This approach helps to keep the focus on your personal growth and on what truly matters to you. Number 14. Confronting Fears Detaching often involves confronting the fears that underpin our attachments, whether they are fear of loneliness, failure, rejection, or change. Identifying and understanding these fears is the first step towards overcoming them. This can involve deep reflection, writing, or even therapy to explore the roots of these fears and how they influence your behavior and decisions. By recognizing your fears, you can begin to question their validity and utility in your current life. Many of these fears may be based on past experiences or limiting beliefs that are no longer relevant or true. Confronting them allows you to reassess your perceptions and make room for new experiences and understandings. Moreover, Dealing with your fears requires courage and action. This could mean putting yourself in situations that you normally avoid, practicing self-affirmation in the face of insecurity, or simply allowing yourself to feel discomfort without running from it. Each step towards facing your fears contributes to your strength and resilience. As you work through your fears, you discover that many attachments are ways of avoiding facing these insecurities. By releasing these fears, you become more able to detach from people, things, or situations that no longer serve your growth or happiness. This not only facilitates detachment, but also promotes greater freedom and authenticity in your life. Number 15. Developing Resilience to Adversities Resilience is the ability to recover from setbacks or adversity, a crucial element in the detachment process. Learning to be resilient not only helps to deal with current challenges, but also prepares you for future difficulties. This involves recognizing that challenges are an integral part of life, and that it is possible to overcome them and learn from them. To develop resilience, practice accepting situations as they occur, without immediately judging them as negative or insurmountable. Strengthen your support network by communicating with trusted friends or family. Cultivate a positive mindset, focusing on the lessons learned rather than dwelling on feelings of failure or discouragement. Additionally, set realistic goals and celebrate small achievements as they are important steps on the path to recovery. By building resilience, you become more adaptable and capable of facing adversity without excessively clinging to people, things, or situations that no longer serve your growth or well-being. Number 16. Cultivating Healthy Relationships Investing in relationships that promote mutual growth involves surrounding yourself with people who support your goals, respect your boundaries, and encourage your well-being. This doesn't just mean seeking new friendships or partnerships, but also evaluating and, if necessary, reshaping existing relationships. Healthy relationships are characterized by open communication, mutual respect, and a balanced exchange of support. They help us feel valued, understood, and secure, providing an environment conducive to our personal development. Conversely, toxic, 
or one-sided relationships can perpetuate unhealthy attachment patterns, hindering personal growth. By investing in relationships that reflect our values and goals, we start to recognize our own worth and gain the necessary strength to detach from what no longer serves us. This may involve setting new boundaries, communicating our needs more effectively, or in some cases, distancing ourselves from people who drain or devalue us. Developing and maintaining healthy relationships requires effort and self-awareness. It is an ongoing process of giving and receiving, understanding and being understood. As we cultivate these positive connections, we become more capable of letting go of harmful ties from the past, focusing instead on what truly enriches our lives and contributes to our ongoing growth. Number 17. Reflection on Legacy This reflection can be a powerful motivator for detachment especially when we realize that some of our current attachments may not align with the legacy we wish to leave behind. Thinking about the legacy we want to leave encourages us to assess our priorities, behaviors, and the relationships we maintain. We question whether what we are doing now, the people we interact with, and the objects to which we are attached are truly contributing to the mark we wish to leave in the world. This exercise of reflection helps us identify and release what is superfluous or detrimental to our greater mission. By focusing on the legacy we want to build, we gain clarity on what truly matters. This propels us to invest our time, energy and resources in activities, people and things that genuinely reflect our deepest values and long-term aspirations. The process of detachment becomes easier when we realize that many of our current attachments may be barriers that prevent us from reaching our larger goals. Furthermore, reflecting on our legacy encourages us to live more intentionally and make decisions aligned with what we want our life to represent. This not only promotes detachment from unnecessary elements, but also nurtures a sense of purpose and fulfillment. When we live with our legacy in mind, we become more aware of how our actions affect others and the world around us, guiding us towards a more meaningful and rewarding path. I hope you enjoyed the video, and since you've made it to the end, share with us your thoughts and write armored wisdom in the comments. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. See you soon.